Welcome to Now Daily. I'm Robert Crawford. Here's what's happening now. There's an article going around talking about radioactive material that was stolen in Iraq. I think this is really just pushing fear. There's really, we've read through the article. Here's in the gist of what's going on. Basically, there was a piece of equipment in Iraq that's specifically used for oil and gas uh, pipeline inspections. In here, you could see it, they go into detail in this Reuters article. Um, it's a specialized camera containing highly radioactive iridium-192. And this specialized camera helps detect uh, basically holes and, and whatnot in, within oil pipelines. So it was in a private facility, it was stolen. Articles online are saying it was stolen from ISIS. It may have been stolen from ISIS or some other militant group, but there are no official records of that. The U.S. State Department says that it is not aware of any reports that the Islamic State or other militant groups have acquired it. And uh, a separate U.S. official went into the detail that it was a specialized camera containing Iridium-192. It was given to the International Atomic Energy Agency based in Vienna, which is a, a UN nuclear watchdog in November. <coughs> so this happened a few months ago. Now, most people would have the fear of, okay, well, it's definitely not enough material to make a, a, a nuclear bomb, an atomic bomb, but maybe it could make a dirty bomb. A dirty bomb would basically be taking a normal bomb, whether it's C4 explosives or some other type of explosive, attaching this material to it, and then detonating that bomb. And then as that explosion, it releases that radioactive material. It can then get inhaled, ingested by others, and that material could then affect them negatively. Now, I think that's a pretty small concern. I don't think anyone should get afraid over this instance. I think a lot of these uh, headlines are just fear-mongering, clickbait. I don't think we need to worry about it that much. But we do need to ask questions. Why was any nuclear material allowed in that region, in Iraq, to begin with? I mean, I, I understand that this is a specialized piece of equipment. Is there any other equipment that could do the same job without the material, is what I would ask. And if not, then why wasn't some, some more special care given to this? It could be such a small trace amount of this material that it wouldn't even be that much effect. Even if you had, let's say, an ounce of this material, you would have to be near it for a considerable amount of time for it to really do negative effects on your health. Probably at least a few minutes, more likely a few hours or a few days. So I'm not too concerned about anyone in the Western world or America being affected by this at all. Um, worst case scenario is that dirty bomb scenario, but it would be a fairly minor one. It could take out, sure, it definitely could happen. I would assume that it would probably be more likely to happen somewhere in the Middle East or Europe. It would be hard to get nuclear materials into the United States, although possible. Um, you know, when there was a instance, I think about a year or two ago, that some uh, nuclear warheads went, went missing from uh, an Air Force base in the United States. So things like that do happen and we don't know really what's going on behind the scenes. From my understanding is there are some systems put in place, at least in the ports, airports, and train stations that try to detect nuclear material, but sometimes it can be such a small trace like this that it probably would get through that. But I'm not too concerned. Basically this video is about alleviating fears over this article. It's really not that big of a deal. I think there's more fear mongering an actual fear that should be put on this. This is Now Daily. I'm Robert Crawford. We're out here hunting for the truth. Comment below. Subscribe. If you hear a new story that needs to get out there, let us know. And this has been Now Daily.